I let the telescope stare unblinkingly for a hundred hours at an old friend. Come with me and let's peer deep into the core of the Andromeda Galaxy. Welcome to SETI Astro. So this all started for me actually a couple years ago when I did 80 hours on Andromeda with my 5-inch Orion 120ST. It's a, it's a 5-inch Acro refractor. And I did a narrowband LRGB combination here. And there was something that caught my eye way back then. And you can kind of see it here. It was actually a little, um, like a little figure eight. And I decided now it's high time. I have a, a, a bigger OTA, a 10 inch uh, imaging newt. And I thought it'd go even longer this time around. So I, I shot for a, a hundred hours um, with the, the 10 inch newt to, to see what I could see. And before we get into the, the full image and, and all the captures and stuff, on the left is what I had with the 5 inch refractor, and on the right is with the 10 inch newt. There's actually detail in this little thing down here. It just There's just so much uh, fractal like detail throughout the, the galaxy. It's, it's pretty amazing. But this is, the, this is the difference in the resolving power between the two telescopes. And like I said, this was 80 hours on the left and now 100 hours on the right uh, for a complete rework of Andromeda. So let's get into it. So for luminance, I took 256 two minute exposures and the luminance is just really cool to look at as well. Uh, I mean, just these little, these little subtle things throughout and just that fractal detail is everywhere through this whole galaxy. There's just rippling bits of squiggle. For the color data, R, G, and B, I got 112 three-minute exposures for R, 96 three-minute exposures for G and B. And both these I did uh, bin two uh, because I really wanted the, the color data out of it. And I kept the luminance at a, at a bin one and all the narrow band stuff's bin one too. So this is the R data, the G data, and uh, the B data. Now that level of LRGB does give you just just a gorgeous Andromeda image. This is just the LRGB data. Um, it's just it's just breathtaking to look at, and there's just so much going on, um, even just in the LRGB. But this wasn't this wasn't the hunt. My real hunt again was that figure eight, and just seeing if I can get any more detail out of it. And that that was the bit that really intrigued me. But as you're about to see. Um, there's so much more going on in Andromeda that I was not anticipating. So first off is hydrogen here. This is 122 15 minute exposures. So a little over 30 hours worth of just hydrogen data. And you can see that Andromeda now looks totally different. Uh, just completely splattered with uh, nebulosity everywhere. I mean, everywhere you look, there's there's something going on somewhere, some bubble of nebulosity somewhere. So that is just crazy to think about, but it's gonna get a lot crazier when we do continuum subtraction on the red channel with the hydrogen data. When you do continuum subtraction uh, for the hydrogen data, this is what you end up with. So you see all the nebulosity, which I was expecting, and uh, the nebulosity looks just amazing, right? This is just all all nebula in the Andromeda galaxy. But what really, really was the surprise for me is down in the core, I knew that there was some spiral structure, uh, but the amount that's happening here was impressive. Not only do we have that big hydrogen column that you see in some images, but there's also these other uh, wispy tendrils. There's one coming up here. There's these ones that are reaching out. There's a really long one you can see very faintly going all the way across to here, there's one coming out there. And this is even with 122 15 minute exposures. These are extremely faint, uh, delicate details way down in the core of Andromeda that I needed to figure out a way to put into a, my final image as well, right? This is, this is the kind of cool, delicate stuff I, I want in the core of Andromeda, but Andromeda has an extremely bright core, which made processing very difficult. Now for oxygen, I got 128 15 minute exposures. 
So 32 hours worth. And that little figure eight, that little elusive figure eight that I was hunting for is this little guy here. But again, with the, uh, the oxygen, the big reveal is going to be in when we do continuum subtraction. And this is our continuum subtracted oxygen data. You can see Andromeda is mostly devoid of oxygen, just all these little pockets. Now, way in the core, there is some brightening. And that just may be because there's so much energy down in the core that it's actually just ionizing oxygen in there. Um, but no real, real structures, maybe a couple little knots. But as we kind of go along and look at the limb here, here's our little figure eight image that's now actually a lot more defined and has uh, some features to it. It's not, it's not really just a figure eight. There's like these two lobes and there's other little internal structure. So it'd be even more amazing if somebody with like a, I don't know, a 20 inch scope could <laughs> image this. Uh, but you can see all along the uh, that limb of Andromeda that there's just all these oxygen pockets uh, throughout the throughout the whole galaxy here. And then I also did uh, 64 15 minutes exposures in sulfur. Now this is one you probably don't see a lot of people do is get sulfur on Andromeda, at least not to that level of 64 15 minute exposures. And I was expecting the sulfur based on my experience with doing it with the refractor is uh, quite a bit weaker and really mirrors the hydrogen pretty well in some of these nebula. But let's go ahead and look at the continuum subtracted version. And you can see that in the continuum subtracted version, there's almost no sulfur, just some spattering in these larger nebula. And again, deep down in the core, uh, there's just ionization of pretty much everything, right? But it's along the limb here that we're actually gonna find a little bit of sulfur in some of these larger nebula kind of in the in the core of them so to combine the continuum subtracted data together i chose to use my perfect palette picker and i did uh, i looked at a bunch of different ones you know me i, I looked at 4x and uh, hso soh like it's just all of them but the one i landed on was my realistic 2 which is an hso palette this palette this is where this is where the fun is this is really what the image was all about um and you know, in the end of the day, I may switch this to be the final image and then the LRGB HSO image to be the, the mouse over, but we'll, we'll see. So here's deep down in the core of Andromeda now with HSO, the hydrogen is, is the bulk of everything. And then the, the whitening in the core is just, everything's getting ionized down in there. We have um, some very faint red tendrils that are coming out and all this, this great structure. We have the big, the big hydrogen column that's kind of rising here, but then there's also some other thinner, wispier ones, which are really cool. And then zooming in, now this is, this is, really, this is really what it was all about. Here's, here's the nebula in HSO in my realistic palette, moving along the limb here, just, just amazing, just breathtaking to look at this detail now from from a very long set of exposures right we're we're talking 312 15 minute exposures to uh to get this detail and i think it's just i think this is just amazing i i could spend a long time looking at this going through what's in my image just just seeing all the different things going on even even like there's this perfect little red ring down in here just just so cool to look at all of it and especially on the the one limb where there's the additional sulfur that was found as well kind of adds i know green's not in space but in the H hso palette i think it adds quite a bit to, to have it kind of in that realm to give it some of that different oranges yellows and um greens if it's really really bright in sulfur like this little point here uh, being so green i mean that's a dot of sulfur down in there so that's that's pretty cool to think about as well. So where I spent my, my biggest time was how to fit this amazing narrowband continuum subtracted HSO palette data into the LRGB data. So again, here's the narrowband data 
and the LRGB data. The LRGB data is just so bright in the core, just screening one on top of the other, it's just not gonna work very well for us. Um, so I spent a huge amount of time um, masking, layering, using like WaveScale HDR, in PixInsight using HDR multiscale, uh, just pretty much every tool I have or own, I try to use to get these to, to, to merge and play nice. Jurgen's toolbox and picks in sight, layers in SETI Astro Suite Pro, just, just everything. And I'm hoping what I ended up with finally is a good representation for all the data as a whole together. I really hope it does it justice. I mean, 100 hours is a long time for my telescope to be pointing to the sky. And, and I wanna try to do it some justice for the amount of time that it, it, it took. So this was my final image. This is where I ended up. This is the full LRGB HSO combination of it all. I did my best to try to tame the core of Andromeda down. So we had structure going almost all the way to the core. It's not going to be as magnificent as just looking at the narrow band data itself. But you could do see some of this thin red tendrils that are up and about. All the nebulosity is in there all throughout it. And there's just some really amazing things to look at in here. We have some of this ashy, dark nebulosity throughout that's really captured in the LRGB image. We have our narrowband data, especially in some of these very dark lanes where it's just like shining through way up here. The blues are coming through from some of these oxygen little bundles including some really cool ones by like this this yellow golden star here just a lot going on in this andromeda image a lot more than i was initially anticipating now going over to the core we could see the spiral structure going all the way to the core from all this hydrogen uh, and some of these other hydrogen bubbles that little red ring some of these moving along these dust lanes, which is cool to see that some of this hydrogen structure falls these dark dust lanes. And coming up to the uh, outer limb here of all those different hydrogen nebula, where it does overlay with the bit of the LRGB. And then looking in the background beyond the Andromeda, it may look like a lot of um, black nothingness, but very, very faintly in the background, we do have some other little faint fuzzes, some very far away galaxies that are just uh, just out of sight, you know, kind of beyond the glare of Andromeda and one actually peeking through right here on the limb of Andromeda itself. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this image as much as I am enjoying it and scrolling around and looking at all the cool features. Be sure to look at the, just the narrowband one as well. I do have it uploaded to Astrobin with the, uh, the mouse over is going to be the narrowband continuum subtracted view. So you can um, kind of see how the two compare and how they line up. I have all my acquisition details. Like I said, it was 102 hours of integration time. I have the LRGB HSO, I have the narrowband HSO one, I have just the LRGB. I even have just the, the hydrogen so you can see all the, the different detail in there like that. And then I have a little bit of write up and some cropped in spots that I really liked looking at, especially in the core. I rotated the nebula along that one limb. Some other close-ups of other spots that I really enjoyed. Here's that figure eight that now really isn't a figure eight. You could really see all the detail in it. And I also have a composite. I thought that'd be uh, fun to show people, especially if those um, individuals aren't in astrophotography, uh, what it takes to, to do one of these images, right? We have our RGB data, we have hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, that combines into the HSO image. We have our RGB image, and then I have my LRGB HSO, and then also adding the stars back in at the end. So there's a lot that goes into constructing these kind of images as well. A lot of the time you spend many, many, many hours trying to uh, process your image. And I know for me, I'm, I'm still not happy with my image, but I hope it does it some justice. 
and I hope you guys get as much enjoyment out of this image as, as I do right now as well. Please comment, like, and subscribe.